Please help me understand. In mythology when God minds lie, trick, and get sick, what is actually happening? And how to understand that if Odin or Loki lied or tricked, and we're supposed to strive to be like our gods, and at the same time we're supposed to be honorable and truthful, then how to reconcile these two opposites? That's a very good question, colleague. Let's try to figure it out. First of all, when we judge mythology by moral and ethical standards, whether Odin and Loki were right or wrong in deceiving and distorting the truth, whether it was a sign of weakness that Tyr lost his arm, and so on and so forth, when we judge anything that has to do with the deeds of the gods, we make the mistake of taking everything literally. Because when we talk about the gods, we are not talking about humans, and we must always keep that in mind. And when people bring the god down to the human level, to their own level, and give him anthropomorphic qualities, they do it for one purpose only. They are trying to understand him better. They are trying to understand what he has manifested in this world, how he has manifested it and how reality is being formed under his guidance through that manifestation. But having done that, people forget to bring the gods back to their former level. So they leave the gods in human bodies, with human minds, and that is a serious mistake, colleagues. Because gods are not humans, and humans are not gods. And to put an equal sign between them is a very inappropriate and unwise decision. They are minds that run the universes. They live for thousands of years. They build realities in which millions, billions of human-like consciousnesses live. And of course, when we judge this or that God by myth, we have to realize that it is just a refracted human description of how a man would behave if he had such a program. It doesn't mean that a god actually behaved that way. When a god lies, tricks, deceives, it is a description of his program, the program of reality's creation. It doesn't mean that a human has to do the same. It is a description of the world according to the way in which this program works. If you don't like it, you can change the program. If you don't like the reality around you, if you complain about the unfairness of the world, there is a reason for it. And that reason is told in the myth. That is how the program worked, and that is how it was reflected in such a distorted way in our middle world. Well, maybe in another world it would have been reflected in a normal way, but in our world it was reflected in a distorted way. This program did not work properly here. It was installed with errors. So we need to either reinstall it or find bugs. If a god got sick, if he was killed, it did not happen to him. It happened to the program of implementation in this world. So it is a reality that got sick and was killed. It is not a god. It is very difficult to understand because 2,000 years of the presence of Christianity and thousands of years of its glorification Deliberate glorification have accustomed people to the idea that a god in human form is normal, that it should be so, because everything that does not take human form, Christianity has called demons, devils, Satan, what else? Well, all evil spirits, all entities that the true believer should be aware of, especially after dark, especially on the eve of Samhain. It is our learned unwillingness to understand, our learned unwillingness to see things differently. 
And we can't say it's our fault, it's our misfortune. But it becomes our fault when we recognize this misfortune and do nothing to correct it. Such programs are present within you, some of them in an archived version. There may be a piece, a part of such a program within you that only begins to run when you become conscious, when you meet a certain source of power, or when you meet someone similar to you. At that moment the resonance happens and the program begins to remember itself, it begins to act. But if you have the belief in your consciousness that the supreme mind of a god can only manifest in the human body and nothing else, then it will not work, you will never make a contact. A god can be manifested in a man, in a tree, in a stone, in a natural phenomenon, in a particular name. You have to put it all together to see the whole program of a god then everything will work. It will work in its entirety. And then you have to find out which of these elements contains the fault, whether it is you, a bird, a tree, or a stone. Perhaps a temple has been built on your place of power, or a furniture factory? Perhaps some migrants who pray five times a day have settled there, and are bothering you, distorting the program of your own God. It all has to be studied. And no one will do it better than the one who initiated the process. After all, who is more rational and conscious, you or a bird, an animal, a tree, who should be the initiator of this process? You can only understand myths if you look at them from another branch of reality. Forget that a god can only be in human form, while he can be human, in general you are human and you are part of your god. But besides being human, a god manifests in a huge number of projections, not just human-like. A god in his human form is only part of the program, but when he is in a variety of forms it is a complete program. It's just that there's a fault somewhere in there, and the myth tells us where. You have to fix it. Because maybe no one else can fix it but you. That will be my answer to you, colleague. And I hope it will help you to reconcile these two opposites within yourself.